Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining uh, this webinar about indoor plants for a better education. Today, we'll indeed we'll be discussing the effects of plants into school settings with a, a team of master students from uh, Wageningen University. Uh, why we're doing so? Because as an engineering office, we are often involved in the design of uh, schools and educational facilities and uh, where we always strive for uh, healthy uh, workspaces, or healthy uh, school settings um, through the implementation of vegetation, natural ventilation and a mix of strategies. Uh, but we know that plants have uh, multiple effects on the, on the, on the human being and uh, both on psychological level, but also uh, very building physics parameters such as the humidity, VOCs levels, CO2 levels and so on. Um, but we miss those boundary conditions that uh, needs to be uh, taken care of when uh, implementing plants into the indoor spaces. Um, that's why we are we are uh, we're partnered with uh, the students from uh, Wageningen University that have knowledge of uh, um, agriculture, agronomy, biology, plant related systems uh, and uh, uh, urban environmental studies. Uh, so knowledge that we miss in our practice, but that we can uh, relate to for uh, for the design of healthy buildings. And through this uh, scheme called academic uh, consultancy training, um, six students from Wageningen University have worked for uh, eight weeks on a project uh, and some questions uh, raised by us and they reinterpret our task in their own uh, perspective uh, as experts of these fields. And today they will share the results of this research with us. Uh, thank you, Maria Sara. Uh, so as uh, we look into concrete solutions, we have asked uh, the team uh, to apply different uh, plant uh, uh, solutions in uh, a project building that uh, we are currently working on in uh, ABD. Uh, within uh, Atelier Pro, uh, the architect and the high advisors. Uh, we thought that uh, the building is uh, a perfect um, application for uh, the research as um, since uh, uh, the tender phase, uh, it was quite clear that uh, during the vision, uh, green elements should uh, be applied in uh, the school. So now let's give uh, the floor to the team. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. So, hello everyone. Um, I am really happy to be here. Um, and I will talk for about uh, 25 minutes with, uh, with Irma, that will help me. And uh, we will talk about our project. So I would like to, f to ask uh, first a little question. And for this, I would like you to participate to this. So the first question is, how much time do you spend indoor each day? And um, I would like you to stand up. So if you are uh, at home, it's maybe difficult, but you stand up. And uh, when you see it's your, I, I will tell some percentages. And when you recognize that you you spend this percentage of uh, of your time indoors, then you sit down. So you do, do you spend less than 50% indoors? less than 50% indoors each week. Between 50 and 80%. More than 80%? Okay, so, uh, okay. At home you couldn't see, but there was one between 50 and 80 and one uh, above 80. So this is approximately what we have in real life because uh, urban dwellers uh, pass around 80% of their time indoors. And um, this can cause some symptoms. So I think we all um, had some symptoms with the corona where we had to stay indoors. We had, um, wait, you had headaches, uh, irritations of the nose or, or the eyes or the throat. Uh, sometimes we are also really tired and also we had some difficulties to concentrate. So all of these symptoms are part of what we have, what we call the sick building syndrome. And to take care of that, um, we, we think that one of the solutions is to implement more plants and more nature indoors. So this was our project. And um, 
so yeah, so this was our project for uh, eight weeks and we decided to focus more on uh, school settings and more on education and how plants can impact education of children. So um, yeah, this, as I already said, this presentation will last around 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then you will have some time to ask questions. So listen, and then you can ask your questions. Uh, so how it is organized, our presentation. So we will have five uh, parts. The first part is an introduction of the team, of the project vision and of the research questions. The second part is the results. So we, I will explain a bit uh, the indoor pollutants and then the effects of plants on health and on psychology. Uh, and then Irma will take over with the case study explanation in the International School of Delft and also we'll give our final conclusion advice and we will have some time for questions. So our team, we are six students from Wageningen University and we all come from different countries and from different backgrounds. So we all are master students from different masters. So myself, uh, my name is Jan, uh, Irma comes from Italy. Wait, sorry, I come from France. Irma comes from Italy and Giuseppe uh, comes from Korea. And the three of us, we study plant sciences. Uh, Ivan, that comes from Colombia, and Taiwo, that comes from Nigeria, they study environmental sciences. And Imke comes from the Netherlands and she studies social sciences, so she's more in the psychology part. So because of this background, we decided to uh, take what Abete told us and try to implement it in our way, in our project. So here is our project vision. On the left side, you can see what Abete wanted. So Maria, Sarah and Ifigenia. And on the right side, we, you have what we implemented in the end. So first, yeah. Uh, so what you see circle here, here is that um, Abete wanted some uh, ideas of biophilic systems and designs indoors. And they also wanted to uh, an analysis of the plants uh, risk and benefits. And they also wanted the plants interaction with the, the air circulation and to see what effects it could have on pollutants. So what we did with that is a literature research on indoor pollutants in schools. Um, and then the plants effects on these and the plants effects on psychology. This is one part that we added because we thought Imke could uh, give her part and it could be interesting to know. Uh, and then we also added some interviews um, with two schools and one company to come from an academical point of view to more practical point of view. Because of this, we could apply all our um, findings in a case study. And then we also did at the end the table with selected plants. So we wrote down the effects of the, these plants on the pollutants and the growing characteristics. And um, all of that was, um, was um, framed <laughs> by this main research question, what plants can best be used to develop a healthy indoor environment in school settings? So, through all this project, uh, we had this main research question in mind and then we had some results. So I will explain you the results that we had in our interviews and in our literature research. So the first results are the pollutants. The indoor pollutants, so we saw that three main pollutants are to find in schools. CO2, that is um, carbon dioxide, and that is um, a greenhouse gas that is produced by uh, breathing of humans. VOCs are um, volatile organic compounds, and they are produced mainly by uh, the, the furniture that is in the room, but also the painting and the glues and everything, uh, and noise, because in the school there is a lot of noise. So for CO2, um, we saw the guidelines of the WHO, so the World Health Organization, and the European Union, and they said that a maximum of 1000 ppm should be in each room. And we saw in a lot of studies that uh, this um, threshold was exceeded in schools. So uh, if this threshold is exceeded, it can lead to asthma, to dry growth, to allergies and wheezing, but also to poor concentration that is bad for, for children and 
uh, and the headaches, I think, too. And so this was the first pollution. The second pollutant is Vox. So the Vox concentration level, there is a guideline for each Vox because uh, they are different molecules and they have all different effects on the health. Um, and then but we saw in many schools that the, their Vox uh, threshold were also exceeding in schools. And this can lead to asthma, conjunctivitis, that is a disease of the eye, fatigue, and some of them can even lead to cancer. I can even increase the risk of having cancer. And then the last pollutant is noise, and noise level have to be lower than 35 decibels. Uh, in many, and in many schools, it was not the case. So this could affect the language development, but also the reading skills. And um, to fight, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. So this is a um, graph that we have for CO2. So you see here the different studies that we saw in the literature, and then on the y-axis, uh, the CO2 concentration. And the red bar is the guideline of 1000 ppm. So you see that uh, on five studies out of eight, the average value of uh, ppm was higher than 1000 ppm in schools. And then this is a table that we did on a uh, box. So you have uh, all the studies again in the rows and then the last row is for the guidelines. And um, you can see that benzene, limonene and toluene um, had higher concentration than what was, uh, what was uh, in the guideline. So because of that, uh, we thought we thought okay. So now we know the pollutants. What are the plant effects on of the of the plants on these pollutants? So on CO2, we know that plants can reduce the CO2 levels by photosynthesis. This is their way of making energy and making their food. So they take uh, they uptake light when there is light, so during the day, and then they uptake CO2 and they produce. Um, they produce sugars and they also release O2 in the in the atmosphere. But the thing is that plants like us breathe. So during the day, it's OK because they they uptake more CO2 than what they release during the respiration. But during the night, they release uh, CO2 without uptaking CO2. So this is a problem that we will tackle after. Mainly um, we think that, yeah, we will tackle after. Sorry, let you. Wait a bit. So uh, in the second part, the Vox, the Vox can be treated um, by plants and their associated microbiome in the soil. So the microbiome are all the bacteria, but also the fungi that are to found in the soil. Um, and then plants can attenuate noise pollution also, making a barrier to noise waves. And this can be um, helped also by so fo so foliage, plant elements, but also the soil. Is really important. So now we know how plants can do that and we also have the effects of plants on psychological health. So we did different categories. One category was physiology, the second one emotions and the third one cognition behavior. So I don't know by heart but for the psychology, the physiology sorry, um, we found out that the presence of plants can decrease the pulse rate by 0.8 persons. So it means that the body is more relaxed. Then uh, for the emotions, the, the sight of plants can reduce anxiety and stress. And for the cognition uh, purposes, um, plants can also increase attention capacity. So these are some of the findings that we saw. Uh, and now what are the best? Um, how, how can plants, plants do best? So what are the conditions that they need for having the best effects on CO2, Vox, but also on psychology and noise? So for CO2, um, the plant characteristic, characteristics are that they must have thick and dark green leaves. Um, and then the optimal temperature is 20 to 25 degrees. So when plants live indoor, it's perfect. And plants, um, plants that uptake more CO2 are the ones that make the most photosynthesis. So therefore, they need more light because photosynthesis needs light. Um, then for Vox, um, we saw that the potted plants are better because they also have this microbiome in the soil. 
the temperature is also between uh, in the range of um, of a normal indoor climate. And uh, same, so folks are also uptake when the plant is doing photosynthesis. So we they also need more light. And we also found out that um, breathing some air through the roots of the um, and through the roots and the soil of the plants can help to decrease the vox levels even more. For the noise, I will go from the bottom. So um, if we take, if we use plants, uh, we, sh we should use a substrate to have our soil to have a ground effect so that the ground also makes like a kind of barrier to the, to the waves. But there is also a possibility to use moss walls that are easier to maintain and that also have a real impact on uh, noise. And for the psychological part, um, the most important is that the plants are visible, that their, their leaves are green and, um, and they have a big leaf coverage. So there is a lot of green at the same place. So based on this, um, I would like now to give the, the talk to, uh, to Irma that we say uh, how we took these criteria into account to apply to the case study. Thank you, Jean. OK, so uh, after uh, Jean's presentation on the results of our literature research, I will continue by presenting their application to the case study of the International School of Delft. So in order to advise ABT, uh, we focused on uh, three different locations within the school, which are classrooms, offices and the central square. In classrooms, uh, we mainly focus on CO2 and VOX uh, reduction. So we um, chose plants with a high um, CO2 and VOX uh, reduction capacity. And this is why this is the location where children spend the majority of their time. So all the plants that you can see in this, uh, in this slide uh, have a high uh, CO2 and VOX removal capacity. Uh, in order to even increase this effect of plants, it's important to consider that a high light intensity is required. Uh, so for this reason, we uh, may suggest eventually the implementation of uh, LED lights to increase the photo period of plants and as a consequence, uh, um, CO2 and VOX uh, reduction. Uh, furthermore, it's important to consider that a temperature between 20 to 26 degrees is needed. Regarding the um, organization of plants, uh, some plants will, um, will be implemented as uh, potted plants uh, because uh, this is mainly because of their morphological characteristics because they would not fit, uh, uh, for example, in a green wall. And as you can see, for example, Ficus benjamina is a kind of tree, so it would really not fit in a, in a green wall. Um, while other plants uh, will be implemented uh, in, a, in a green wall uh, that will be uh, based on a, a modular system. So this means that plants uh, will be located inside uh, boxes. Um, and uh, for schools, we suggest a soil-based system. So this means that plants will root in, uh, in soil uh, from which they will receive nutrients, uh, while they will receive um, water through a drip irrigation system. Um, this is why, because uh, uh, as already mentioned by Jan, um, soil also has a, a positive effect on vox and noise reduction. Uh, so let's say that the implementation of plants both uh, uh, through a green wall and the potted plants will uh, increase this effect of vox and noise reduction. For offices, uh, we mainly focus on uh, noise reduction. Uh, so for this uh, reason, we uh, mainly suggest the implementation of moss walls because they have the highest uh, uh, noise uh, reduction capacity. Um, and they also need uh, very, they don't need a lot of maintenance, so they are convenient. 
Uh, these are suggested both inside and outside offices. So inside offices uh, in order to um, target not only uh, noise, but also CO2 and Vox, uh, and Vox, we may suggest to implement also the same system and the same plans we already suggested in classrooms. In this way, we can have uh, yeah, uh, yeah, um, a bigger effect also on noise. Uh, while outside the offices, uh, they are also suggested because then they can reduce noise coming from corridors, for example. Uh, in the central square, we mainly focus on uh, uh, noise reduction uh, and uh, um, decorative purposes. So for this reason, uh, we uh, mainly suggested the plants uh, with uh, high foliage and with uh, big green leaves, mainly because uh, from a, the psychological point of view, green leaves, uh, the color green is already sufficient to have an effect. Then, of course, colors are even better. Um, so for these plant is for these plants the, that we suggest it's important to consider that they need a bright to medium uh, light and a temperature included between 18 to 23 degrees. Regarding the organization of these plants, uh, we suggest the implementation of a green wall, uh, again based on a modular system. So, such as in the school, uh, such as in the classrooms, uh, plants will uh, um, be located inside the boxes. Uh, however, in this case, nutrients and water uh, will arrive through uh, um, an hydroponic system. And this is suggested because an hydroponic system is uh, uh, easier to maintain, it requires less attention than a system based on uh, the use of soil. All, uh, yeah, uh, okay. Then in the next slides, you can see, let's say, a graphical representation of what uh, I've just said based on the on the floor plans. So in this slide, you can see the, the central square and yeah, you can see that we suggest the implementation of green walls in two different locations within the central square. Uh, while in the next slide, you can see, uh, let's say, more on the left, uh, the, um, the, the classroom uh, with the green wall and the potted plant, uh, while more on the right side, the office, and you can see that we also suggest the implementation of most panels outside the office uh, to remove uh, noise from, uh, from the outside. Uh, so now we would like to conclude, uh, coming back to our main research question. And we would like to conclude by pointing out that accounting only on plants uh, to achieve a good air in uh, indoor settings uh, would be not sufficient to meet uh, the, um, the, the standards needed. Um, so for this reason, we uh, mainly uh, suggest the use of air, uh, of air circulation systems based both on mechanical and natural circulation. However, given all the positive results uh, coming from uh, experimental trials on the effect of plants on CO2, VOX and noise reduction, we suggest to implement plants uh, as uh, an integrative tool. And for this reason, it's important to keep in mind that uh, yeah, it's important to uh, measure uh, CO2, VOX and noise concentration with a regular base. As a final advice to ABT, let's say from the agronomic point of view, uh, we suggest the implementation of both potted plants and the green walls to increase the effect of plants. Uh, we suggest uh, the um, yeah, cross, uh, cross ventilation, uh, especially in the morning, for example, in classrooms, and this is because uh, uh, plants tend to produce CO2 during night. Um, then, uh, for, uh, in order to target also the psychological uh, um, effect of plants, uh, it's important to keep in mind that the plants need to be visible uh, with big uh, green leaves. Uh, and finally, the two most important environmental factors to consider are temperature and uh, uh, light intensity. In general, uh, low temperatures and low light intensity are, uh, are not recommended. Uh, 
Uh, with the last two slides, we would like to show you uh, our uh, work methodology, let's say. So in this slide, you can see part of the table we created uh, with uh, all the plans. And uh, we used this table uh, to uh, define which plans to suggest to, to ABT. Uh, in this table, plans were ranked according the air quality, the, uh, air quality improvement, uh, light requirement, watering, optimal temperature, fertilizers, and in the end, also regarding their possible application to hydroponic systems. Finally, uh, we created uh, three posters to uh, wrap up, let's say, our, uh, our work. Uh, each poster targets a different topic. So in the first one, we target the uh, health benefit uh, of, uh, of indoor plants. In the second one, uh, well, Okay, in the second one, all the different plants uh, that we that are potentially able to to reduce the CO2 and VOX, and the one we chose are uh, indicated with uh, the black circle. And then in the last poster, the, the case study of the International School of Delft. Thank you for your attention. Um, in normal conditions, I would invite the rest of the group for the discussion, but let's see. Thank you very much, Irma. We uh, will open the floor for the questions. So there is already one from the chat. Um, I will read it. Um, how do you deal with mites and other pests that usually inhabit the plants during extended period of staying indoors? Okay, so uh, we really did not uh, go into this, uh, this uh, topic uh, in a very specific way, but uh, in, um, in the systems we, we proposed, oops, uh, in the system we proposed, uh, there will be, um, for example, in the hydroponic system or also yeah, especially in the hydroponic system, uh, we will uh, use, uh, you, you can give let's say, apart from fertilizers and uh, water, you can give other substances that will uh, reduce uh, the possibility of having pests, like also, for example, fungi and all these kind of, of pests. Okay, thank you. That was very clear. Um, we have another, another question about uh, psychology, so maybe students with this background. Uh, did you find any differences in psychological effects between the different type of plants, uh, for instance, potted plants or green walls? Uh, no, within the literature research, the focus was more on the influence on plants, on the visibility of plants. So just seeing the color green and uh, something alive had this effect on psychology. So there was no distinction between um, what type of plants, just that the leaves were visible in green. Okay, thank you. So the, the visibility is the important part. Yes. Um, this one uh, from Marianne. Uh, when will the most walls be implemented in our office in Delft? Uh, we cannot uh, answer that for now, but that's uh, <laughs> an input uh, for ABT. Um, let's see the other one. Mm -hmm. To what extent do you believe the findings can be generalized to other settings, for example, hospitals? So think about other settings of, uh, of these findings. Who wants to answer this one? Well, um, in the case of hospitals, it's quite tricky because all the surface has to have to be uh, without any microorganism or something that can make uh, harmful microorganisms to grow. So mm, mainly we think that the approach of this would be more like buildings are, and school settings. So I think that's... So that some effects answer. are applicable also to, to hospital, but... Yeah, the thing with hospital is that you, everything has to be super clean. If you have surfaces like dirt or something like that where microorganisms microorganism can grow, it can like help to uh, hide diseases or harmful microorganisms to, be there, to grow there. Yeah. 
Um, if I can add to this, um, the psychological, psychological effect is uh, very general to people. So um, there have been studies done in hospitals, which we also took into account. Uh, and this effect is visible anywhere. So it's for children in schools, in hospitals. So for the psychological effects, um, they can be very uh, beneficial. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Inka. Uh, another question is more on the logistics side. Will the poster and presentation be available in PDF on Leonardo? Yes, uh, we'll uh, print uh, the posters from the students, so this will be available in our premises. Um, then another question from Nick. Uh, is variety in plants an added value? So variety of plants in terms of uh, uh, yeah the, the potted plants or maybe species of plants is an added value for uh, for the effects that they have. So in general, I would say no. It's not so much an added value, but it will be um, let's say more efficient to have a plants with high foliage. So I don't know, for example, if one variety is based more on uh, small and thick leaves, then uh, it will be beneficial to increase the effect to include another variety. Vari 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 well, another plant with big leaves. So yeah, this is. Okay, to exploit the different uh, yes, effects of the different exactly. type of plants. Yes, I think that answered the question. Uh, we don't have more questions for now. However, I have one. Um, you mentioned uh, during the presentation that um, hydroponic systems um, have uh, uh, yeah, don't have soil, so they have a different type of uh, uh, structure when they're implemented. Does this affect the, the VOCs levels of uh, the capacity of uh, the plants compared to a plant with soil? Um, can you repeat the question, please? Yes, so in an hydroponic system, for instance, does the capacity of the plants of removing VOCs or CO2 levels uh, is hindered by uh, the, the, the hydroponic system or is comparable to a normal plant in its soil? So yeah, so we discovered that um, plants can, the plant system, plant wall can remove box by two parts, uh, one by plant itself and also by microorganisms living in soil. And in hydroponic system, since the water flows all the time uh, through the gutter, the microorganisms cannot live as much as soil. So in that case, I guess I assume I assume that uh, the box removal by pots or microorganisms can be reduced. But for like overall capacity, it's not clear that I cannot say clear that hydroponic system has um, lower box cap removal capacity by plants. Okay, so there is uh, some uh, some uh, effects of the of the presence or not of the soil, but so we can make assumptions, but we don't have that clearly, uh, let's say, tested or proved. Okay. Do we have more questions here from? Uh, I have one question. Um, you said that you take the uh, the VOC the, the and uh, CO two in classrooms out, and in the offices you 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 focus on noise. And I asked why um, I asked myself why you don't uh, focus on noise in classrooms because the noise in classrooms is very disturbing sometimes. So is there a reason why you did that? Yeah, so um, this is a good question. And uh, so there are two things. Uh, we think that uh, the most wall would be, so in the offices, it would be implemented outside also to reduce the noise that comes from the, the corridors that are the mo most noisy ones. Because in the classrooms, uh, generally people, like students don't speak to each other. Pupils don't speak to each other. So there is one person speaking and then the other person's listening. 
So therefore, we didn't think that it was really important to implement that. And also, we don't want to do a complete green, um, a complete green classroom. So we we focus more on the psychological health and the and the physio, physio, physical health more than the noise. Okay. So if the if the school uh, is has a method of working that people talk with each other, the students talk with each other, then it could be interesting to put them all. Exactly. Yeah, I, I would like to add something that in classroom you cannot really control the source. So the source of noise will always be there. So it's kind of difficult to control that part. Aside from that, what Jan was saying, but in the professor's uh, classroom, well, this, the room from the professors, uh, we expect that the noise will be lower, like the source of the noise inside is lower. And if you make something to isolate or control the outside noise that is coming from, uh, that would be beneficial. Thank you for your answers. There is uh, one more question. Um, is there a limit to the amount of plants for them to stay beneficial? So I think the question is, are they uh, affecting uh, each other, the presence of uh, uh, plants together? Or does anyone want to answer this one? So, um, I think the only uh, limitation is a limitation of space that you could put plants. But other than that, uh, the nutrition or the amount of light or the uh, CO2 level in the classroom or indoor environment is sufficient for a plant to live. So yeah, um, they don't really interact each other uh, in normal condition. So as, in, as long as you have enough space, you can put uh, enough plants for, yeah, like as, as much as you want. So for instance, uh, since uh, during the presentation, you mentioned that the CO2 levels um, are, CO2 is released during the night and it's uh, proportional to the, the capacity of plants also to uptake CO2 during the day. So if there is a room full of plants, that means that in the morning we'll need to ventilate the room to make sure that uh, the CO2 levels are uh, are kept within the standards. Yeah, that's for sure. But um, if you don't like, if you don't want that situation, you can also put some plant species without uh, with low CO2 import capacity. That means they do photosynthesis less, and that means they also have a uh, low uh, maintenance for res respiration. So uh, during the night, they uh, emit CO2 less than other plant species and the low, uh, room in the room, the CO2 level will be lower. But yeah, you can simply ventilate the room to higher. So they would balance their effects out yeah. if uh, we need them, yes. Okay, um, we don't have more questions. So, unless there are more questions here, any questions from you? Any questions from you? So, then uh, thank you everybody for uh, joining. Ah, we have. One question yes. for you. Yes. Um, if you, he you heard it, this, uh, what is most interesting part for you as for ABT? Well, for us, it was important to have the results of this research to kind of get the, the principles of uh, when uh, designing with vegetation indoor, um, what are the effects both the beneficial effects but also the detrimental effect or uh, what's uh, for instance the co2 levels when they go too high we need to take measures to overcome this by implementing ventilation measure for instance in the morning or um, also to uh, kind of uh, identify those plants that can work with certain functions uh, like classrooms 
uh, where the noise, for instance, is uh, is high. We need we can implement maybe more MOSWOS that can uh, uh, reduce that uh, that noise levels. And uh, also, when we design with uh, with uh, plants in mind, we need to take care of uh, the boundary condition, this uh, temperature, humidity levels, which in buildings are are uh, are quite uh, defined by the functions. So uh, we imagine that uh, with the inventory you have created, the students have created, we can uh, start to customize our approach and uh, be more specific on uh, what what uh, the, the best solution uh, could be according to the plant characteristics. So in that sense, uh, that was a very useful and insightful uh, um, report that you have produced and it, that we will uh, share in, uh, in uh, within ABT and uh, hopefully also apply this uh, strategy soon. Yeah, exactly. And also due to the fact that uh, uh, the backgrounds are different, we are more, uh, we have an engineering background. Now um, the research can provide us uh, with the information about uh, different plans that uh, we were missing. So we think that it will be very good um, uh, inputs for our projects. And also, I think uh, within ABT, we work, uh, we try to work always in a multidisciplinary environment and multidisciplinary teams. So having also experts with different uh, technical backgrounds and uh, like uh, you students with uh, with uh, totally different backgrounds can just bring more value to uh, what we are doing and in project bring all the perspective of the different uh, disciplines together. So it kind of open up also our minds on some some stuff that we didn't think about before. And now we, we will start reflecting more on certain uh, strategies, for instance. OK, so well, thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this webinar. Uh, we there will be a recorded version shared uh, on Leonardo. And uh, yeah, thank you very much and uh, have a good day. <laughs>